Ever wonder why the choice of a chipset in your device can make or break your tech experience? Well, think of a chipset as the heart of your device, a critical component that determines several key parameters. From the maximum camera resolution to the amount of RAM and screen resolution, it's the chipset that calls the shots. So, selecting the right one is crucial. Now, are you ready to dive into the world of flagship chips? Let's start by exploring the Kirin 9010 and Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. On one side, we have the Huawei Kirin 9010, a polished version of the Kirin 9000S. On the other side, we have Qualcomm's most powerful mobile chip, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. The heart of the Kirin 9010 is its Taishan Prime core that hums along at 230 GHz, while the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3's Cortex-X4 core runs at a blistering 3.3 GHz. The Kirin's three middle cores and four power-efficient cores have received a slight clock bump, but they still can't match the clock speeds of Snapdragon's cores. In terms of fabrication process, the Kirin 9010 uses a 5nm technology, while the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 utilizes a 4 nm process. This difference in fabrication process gives the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 a slight edge in power efficiency. As for the graphical power, the Snapdragon chip has a faster GPU, but the core architecture of the Kirin 9010 is believed to be similar to the Kirin 9000S. While the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 seems to lead the race in terms of clock speeds and power efficiency, does this translate to a better performance? Let's find out. Performance is king in the world of chipsets. Let's see how our contenders fare. The battle of the benchmarks tells an interesting tale. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 leads the charge with a significant performance gap. In the Geekbench V6 test, it scored 2170 in single core performance and 6777 in multi-core. The Kirin 9010, on the other hand, scored 1442 in single core and 4471 in multi-core performance. The N22 benchmark scores further accentuate this gap, with the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 scoring over 2 million, while the Kirin 9010 trails behind, with a score just under 1 million. Interestingly, despite having an underclocked prime core, the Kirin 9010 still manages to outperform its predecessor, the Kirin 9000S, in benchmarks. This demonstrates Huawei's commitment to refining and improving their chipsets with each new iteration. However, when it comes to the raw numbers, it's clear that the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 has a significant edge. Its superior clock speeds and advanced 4 nm fabrication process contribute to better power efficiency and higher performance. The Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 clearly takes the crown in performance. But how do these chips handle gaming? Let's see. We all love a good gaming session on our devices, right? Let's see which chip handles it better. When it comes to real-world gaming performance, the numbers can be quite surprising. Let's take the popular game Genshin Impact as an example. The Huawei P70 Ultra, powered by the Kirin 9010, manages to run this game fairly well. It delivers an average frame rate of 60.2 frames per second when running the game at the highest settings with a 60 frames per second limit. And the frame rate boosting feature turned off. The frame rate remains stable at around 60 frames per second for the initial 10 minutes but then it drops to 55.7 frames per second over the next 15 minutes. During this gaming session, the phone's temperature reaches a maximum of 46.8 degrees. Meanwhile, devices powered by the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 chip handle Genshin Impact and other resource demanding titles with ease, maintaining a stable 60 frames per second frame rate. What's more, these devices don't get as warm as those powered by the Kirin 9010 which is a significant advantage for those extended gaming sessions. So, for all the gamers out there, the Snapdragon 8 Gen 3 seems to be the clear winner. But remember, the choice of a chip depends on what you value more in your device. So, there you have it. A detailed comparison of the Kirin 9210 and Snapdragon 8 Gen 3. The Snapdragon, with its superior fabrication process and clock speeds, leads in raw performance. The Kirin, despite an underclocked prime core, holds its own, especially in real-world gaming scenarios. Both chips have their strengths, underlining the importance of choosing based on your specific needs. Remember, the best chip for you depends on your needs. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more tech comparisons like this one.